So amid this time, there is a lot of controversy regarding the election, the ongoing election, the results have yet to be certified and confirmed with the Electoral College. However, there is a story being circulated around Trump supporters. There's a lot of allegations of voter fraud. Now, just to quickly give you my opinion about it, do I think there is voter fraud? I don't know, maybe. However, what I do believe is that there were enough inconsistencies and supposed glitches that caused me to be concerned. It evokes a certain uh, apprehension from me, and I think you are right to be apprehensive. If you are a Republican, Generally speaking, Republicans tend to be really asserting these allegations as if they are proven fact, and I can certainly understand where they are coming from. And when I say that, I mean the conservative Republican voter base, not necessarily elected Republican officials, because, I mean, let's be real, a lot of neoconservatives, they prefer Joe Biden over Donald Trump. I mean, Joe Biden is really a George W. Bush, a John McCain type Republican. Let's be honest. They will raise taxes, they will increase spending, and they will pass gun control and start wars whenever it is politically expedient or even socially expedient. Um, and if you're a Democrat... Generally speaking, because there are some Democrats who are concerned about the election process or who are kind of nervous about Joe Biden winning uh, legitly, legitimately, and in a fair way. But generally speaking, the Democratic voter base and Democratic politicians are saying, no, there is nothing to see. You are just imagining this. Now, I do believe that there is a chance that some of these allegations are, I mean, they're allegations, they still need to be proven. What I meant to say, it is possible that some of these are just inconsistencies and glitches, and this isn't a video to go over every single inconsistency and glitch. This is a story, or I want to talk about that case in Pennsylvania that, according to the New York Post's headline, was a minor victory in Pennsylvania. There was a lawsuit over voter ID, so to give you the general idea of what was going on, so on Thursday, November 12th, um, a judge ruled that counties cannot tally mail-in ballots from people who failed to provide ID by November 9th, which was the deadline, November 9th being Monday. The Secretary of State in Pennsylvania, Kathy Book of our, I think that's how you pronounce her name, was trying to, or wasn't trying to, extended that deadline until November 12th, which is November 13th. But uh, the judge, uh, Mary Hannah Levitt, or Levitt, ruled that the Secretary of State does not have the authority to do that. So it's not clear um, how many of the these ballots are going to be tossed out. However, in the city of Philadelphia, there were around uh, 2,136 ballots where election officials were unable to verify the voter's identification. And it's important to note that those 2,000 ballots were not included in the 54,000 vote advantage that Biden has over Trump in that state. So, that is ultimately why I am apprehensive about the notion of calling this a even a minor Trump victory. Um, I was told about this story by a co-worker of mine who said this was the first domino. So, maybe it is the first domino and uh, judges will stop throwing out affidavits as if they're hearsay, which happened. And that's something I'm going to look into more and maybe make another video about or just come up with my own opinion about that. Um, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not 
a legal expert by any means, so this is really outside of my wheelhouse. I'm trusting lawyers. Well, I mean, you know, there's two sides. You know, lawyers will do their job representing one side or the other, and journalists will, unfortunately, filter it through their bias or hopefully do their best to um, mitigate their bias and just present the facts as they are. But I am very apprehensive about calling this a minor Trump victory because first, the fact that Biden has around a 54,000 vote lead without those unverified ballots, if it's true that these ballots that were unverified weren't counted in that 54,000 vote lead, then I don't see how you can claim that's a victory to Trump. Especially since that's not going to throw out or uh, uh, dev or decrease the 54,000 vote lead that Biden has. And even if they were included in that number, so just in Pennsylvania alone, or uh, sorry, uh, Philadelphia, 200 unverified ballots that were included, that if they were included in the 45,000 votes would only, assuming those were 100% for Biden, would only bring it down to 52,000. Now, could you say that um, statewide, maybe there's around 50,000 ballots that can't be verified. Maybe that's a possibility. Millions of people vote in every state. So that is a possibility. So in to an extent, I do understand how somebody might think that this is the first domino because it, you have a precedent being set that says that unverified ballots should not be counted. And, Maybe there are unverified ballots that were counted in that 54,000 lead that Biden has. And I wouldn't say that this bolsters the case that the Secretary of State, Kathy Bookvar, is trying to rig the election in Joe Biden's favor. Because Joe Biden already has a 54,000 vote lead in the state of Pennsylvania. So why would the I don't know 2,000 ballots in Philadelphia that can't be verified... Why would that be worth anything? Of course, right now I am operating on the assumption of what I think was proven, which is that these ballots were not counted in the official lead. But like I said, however, I will acknowledge that this is a win for election integrity. So you can count that as a win if that's what you care about. This hopefully, to you know, talk about precedent again, if a ballot is neither verified nor valid by the initial election date or the already established deadlines, then a public official who is not authorized to extend arbitrary deadlines cannot do so. Elections should be strict, no matter the method of voting. I don't care if you are voting in person, by mail, or electronically. A standard must be set in place and should not be deviated from because if you have loose rules that can be extended willy-nilly by somebody who is not authorized, then you set yourself up for cases of inconsistencies and voter fraud. And where you have inconsistencies, it is hard to apply a safe method for validating results and I will also say that uh, this is a win if you're like me and you view democracy with a negative connotation or if you view it dubiously in any way at all I'm not saying that if we live in a republic we shouldn't be able to democratically elect representatives but what I am saying is I don't think democracy is something that is worthy of worship. I don't think it's something that we should uphold and be like, I love democracy so much. That's something that I even challenge my friends on who say I love democracy. Um, I think it's an absurd position. I'm not saying you're a bad person if you love democracy. I'm just saying it's an absurd position. And with my skepticism and you know, dubious view of democracy, I ask myself, do we really want to enfranchise voters who are unable to ensure that their ballots are valid? 
If voters can't do that, if they cannot ensure that their own ballot is valid, or they couldn't follow the rules, then why should those same voters be allowed to vote for leaders? What makes them in the right position to determine what is a good leader and what is a bad leader? And what gives them... How can we be sure that they are competent enough to vote on issues that are profusely more complex than filling out a ballot? Are these people that we really want voting? Or if you have an extension of six days past the initial election to verify your ballot or to make sure it goes through, and you fail to do that by then, you obviously do not care enough about what you are voting for. So I think it's very fair to say that your ballot should be tossed out after the deadline. So to uh, surmise what I said very quickly in bullet points, I don't see this as a as necessarily a Trump victory. I can understand that this might be a domino validating the fact that there are some, not not some, there is definitely a push to count ballots that should not be counted. And I do think this is a win for election integrity. Uh, thank you for watching this video or listening to this uh, audio. <laughs> Have a good one. Oh, won't you come?